Okay, got a 2021 New Canoe Unlimited. Uh, I made a video in the past, if you've seen that one, it's on my channel right now, but I've made some, some upgrades, made some changes, uh, things that I used the boat for a while and thought of and kind of went back and forth with and uh, figured I would make a video um, just doing an updated video really i mean i feel like these boats they they're a constant you know they're never done it's always constantly changing and evolving you know especially with the sport um you know new boats come out or new products and whatnot so i figured i'd go over all the changes that i got and uh since how it's been crazy cold outside and I haven't hit the water in about two weeks. Uh, I will be hitting the water this weekend, luckily. Um, but yeah, uh, we'll just start with the front. Obviously, uh, we'll get the motor guide XI3, 55 pound, 12 volt. Uh, this is the pinpoint with the GPS. Uh, just got the standard uh, machete prop on there. I do have the Katana and um, if you do fish a lot of grass, I do recommend this. Uh, you, I have lost speed on the two boats that I've had before um, and use this, uh, but you get more thrust and uh, comes through the grass a lot better. It doesn't seem to get, you know, all wrapped up like the machete does. Um, so moving forward, uh, oh, this is on a, a one objective uh, new canoe uh, bow mount. I really like it. They're a little pricey. Um, it's got uh, some kind of reinforcing up here what which i like and it's it's rock solid um i've been happy with it we got um uh, got lights here i'll turn the lights on so i got my navigation lights on led strips here i got the green and obviously the get the red over here um and those are all wired up you can't really see right here but I have a, a plastic plate I mounted and wires for those lights come down into this plate and then run along the inside of the hull. Um, with the, let me turn that light off. Uh, so the plug is a 70 amp Marine Co. Uh, bow mount plug. Highly recommend those. They come with ferrules, it's heavy duty. You're not gonna have any issues like with um, some of like the other popular bow mount plugs that people use just with the amount of amps you're pulling with these motors and if you're doing long distances or it's you know july and it's 95 degrees outside they just tend to get loose and then you get arcing and you can have failure and stuff getting hot and just it, it's no good just spend the the money get a marine co people have had good uh, experiences with the anderson plugs i've never used them uh, i've always used the 70 amp Marine Co or the 50. And since I went to the 55 pound from the 45, I did jump up to the 70 amp because this does pull a little bit more juice than the 45. Um, got my um, my cord here to deploy and, and bring it up. It's just a rogue gear um, tether. You, know, you can just unhook it when I take this off real quick and easy. That runs along the gear pod and comes over to here. And I have my pull cord right there. So I just pull that, deploy, or bring the motor up. Um, up front here, obviously have the new canoe gear pod. Um, pretty straightforward. I got a Ionic 20 amp hour lithium battery that's in there running the electronics. Got some paperwork, just some odds and ends. I, I put my uh, small cooler in there um and i also can get my rain gear in there as well it's really nice having that dry storage um, also have the one objective handle for the uh, xi3 i like that that's cool i got the one objective uh gps puck mount i really like that it just it really kind of cleans it up and i don't have to drill any holes anywhere uh, my last boat i had the uh, 0.1 mounted on here and had to drill a big hole kind of it looked nice, but I think that's a, a better deal. It's worth the money. Um, I'm using the switchblade on the uh, AI 3-in-1 transducer. Um, how I mounted this is I got a Lowrance structure scan or total scan mount. 
and uh, it's the same bolt pattern as the three in one. And I bolted the three in one to that total scan mount and then bolted that to the uh, switch blade. Now, if you notice, you can see that the transducer is kind of angled down slightly. And that's because in the water, with the pressure of the water, this moves back just a touch and then it levels out. Um, and I have that mounted to uh, just some half inch cutting board that I had cut up and uh, mounted that to there. Just so when I take the gear pod off, everything comes with it. The transducer is still mounted to a fish finder. I don't have to unhook anything. I just do the two uh, track bolts, pull that thing right off, goes in the back of my Jeep. I don't have to worry about it, you know, going down the road. You know, it's a lot of money sitting right there. And I just rain or just stuff coming up off the road i just i don't i don't have to worry about it it just all comes off in one um and it's quick and easy uh, i have the transducer cable right here rolled up uh, i got a little boomerang uh, i got a fish counter right here um you know if you really catch them that good but mounted on the fish finder um the mount itself i have a cell phone uh, kind of arm deal, you know, you catch a big one, you can just pop your phone in, take a quick picture, uh, just kind of makes the selfie picture, you know, a little bit easier, I guess. Um, up here is the Lawrence uh, TI2 12 inch. Um, I've had that for a couple years now. It's a fantastic uh, fish finder. The only issue is it is not active target slash forward facing sonar compatible. Um, which kind of sucks, but side image is fantastic. If you've ever seen any of my uh, posts or pictures of screenshots, you'll know. Uh, side image is great on it. 2D is fantastic. And speaking of 2D, the reason why a lot of people will use the, um, the scupper mount right here for the bigger transducers like this, uh, I just really like to fish vertically in the wintertime uh, for crappie and bass. And so if I'm standing up here on the deck and my transducer is down on the bottom here under the boat, it's really hard to catch uh, your, your bait, like your lure, your jig or whatever, uh, under the transducer so you can, you know, video game fish, you can watch it. Uh, so with the switchblade up here, um, I can stand in the deck there and I can drop my lure straight down next to the transducer and I can pick up my, my lure every, every drop. I can, you know, it's not an issue. I just drop straight down. You can watch the jig. You can uh, fish for the fish, you know, video game style, if you were. Uh, I, I do have a video up on my channel. You can check out me doing that. It's really addicting. Um, moving forward, um, got the catch board, measuring board. Just got that thrown up there. I uh, need one of those if you're going to fish the tournaments. I uh, just picked up this net from Academy. It's just a cheap net, but it is rubber. Got to have rubber. Um, and that just sits there, and you can see it sits on. Uh, those are the Yak Gadget uh, rod stagers. And I had bought the four uh, rod stagers that put four rods in there. And I can, and uh, if I do any river events, I'll probably do that. But I will say it gets, it just gets a little more crowded in here. Uh, I like to stand and fish. If I have a rod in my hand, I'm standing. Uh, so I just want as much deck space as possible. But I do recommend these. These are nice because I can get eight rods back there on the black pack. And I'll put two on each side. That seems to be the sweet spot is 12 rods. Uh, we got... Oh, for anyone that doesn't have an unlimited, uh, this is how I have my scuppers set up. Um, so I get the two up here. And I have the one there, and that seems to be the best with uh, water coming in. So if you're just kind of fishing along or just sitting still, you'll have a little bit of water up here in, in the, um, whatever you want to call them there. Uh, but once you start driving, all the water that's up here, and the water doesn't come up to the this, uh, this part of it. It just stays in these, like, gunnel kind of area, whatever you want to call them. I can't remember the name of that. Uh, so like I said, once you start moving, all that water flushes right out. Same with any rain or if you... I haven't taken many waves of the front of this. It sits a lot higher than the pursuit that I had uh, before this. Uh, so you, I haven't taken a lot of waves over it. And I, and I have like a couple times, but nothing, not a lot. 
but all that water just runs right down and comes right out. That, that's one of my favorite parts about this boat is I don't have to worry about water. I don't get water in the hull like I did in my last boat. I don't have to worry about taking waves over or rain because any water that does come up into this, it just flushes right up, right? It's fantastic. I, I used to have to worry about like, you know, fishing on a, a popular lake that has a lot of boats and, or if it's, you know, got heavy rain, it's just peace of mind is worth it a hundred million percent in this boat. I love it. Um, right here, I just have a zip tie for my lure knockers. Um, over there, that's the one objective, um, organizer there. It's really good for pliers, scissors, that kind of thing. And I have this bungee cord, uh, so when I'm driving, I can just put the bungee cord over it. Those stay in there. I don't have to take them in and out. Um, right here I have, it's just an Amazon, uh, I think it's a Neelite switch panel. Uh, you got voltage. I wouldn't trust that because it's, I'm running a lithium. Um, then just got three switches for, you know, my nav lights and then the uh, lights for in the hull. Uh, those are all ran under the, uh, under the boat, inside the hull. And they run back there and I'll, I'll get into the battery situation when I get back there. Uh, we got a uh, Yak Attack uh, Omega. Uh, I like that. So like if I catch a fish and I'm, um, you know, measuring it or whatever, I can just slap that rod right in here. I don't have to, you know, go back there and put it back in the rod holder or try and squeeze it in here. I just throw it in there and uh, good to go. Get Yak Attack uh, cup holder. And this does fit bigger cups. Um, you can see I have space and it's one of, one of those cups there. Um, I actually have a second one coming uh, in the mail. I, sh I thought it was going to be here today, but uh, get one of those coming. So you can have, you know, like two big jugs of water. Um, so under the seat, uh, we have my soft plastic storage. Uh, just have the majority of my soft plastics fit in the, these two tubs. Uh, and then I just did this. I just installed this because uh, when we get back there, I'll show you. But I can also have some more storage back there. And I just put it on this, this cord here. And this is for all my big swim baits. So you can see I got a bunch of swim baits in there, hooks and that kind of thing. Because swim baits are kind of, it, it kind of sucks to, you know, you don't want to get the tails bent up. You don't want to, you know, get the uh, soft plastic tails or like the paintbrush tails. And they're just kind of a pain in the ass. So uh, I bought this and I'm going to get some Spro Mix, some uh, lure wraps. They're like plastic lure wraps I'm going to get. And I also got some A-Rigs in there too. Those are also a pain in the ass to store in the boat, especially a, a kayak. Those just slide back into there, real easy access. And if you've noticed, the chair is a lot taller. Uh, <laughs> I put a seven inch pedestal steed on it. Now I don't sit a lot, but the only time I sit is if like I'm driving to a spot or you know whatever, going down lake. But I put a seven inch uh, seat pedestal. You can get them at Walmart, Academy, Amazon. They're super cheap, they're like 20 bucks. And you just bolt them right to the uh, seat base and then bolt to the uh, swivel. And uh, it, it's fantastic. I, I was a little concerned about uh, center of gravity, but then I was like, well, I stand the entire time I fish, so why would you know that being a little taller you know, be an issue for driving down a lake? And sure enough, uh, one of the first days I went out with this, the pedal stool was probably one of the roughest days on the water I've had with this boat. And it felt great in the wind going over waves and whatever. It, it didn't feel too tippy or anything. And just as a reference, I'm 6'1 and 190, 195 pounds. Um, so I feel as though even if you were bigger in that 6'2", 6'3 range and that 250 range, I really don't think that it would feel, to me anyways, it would feel too tippy. You know, especially if you stand um, and if you get sea legs per se. But really, I just it's just like fishing on a boat. This thing's fantastic. Uh, moving back. Uh, also got um, got my paddle right here to a uh, cheap paddle holder there that's mounted there. Just I did lose uh, the other half of it because I did not have a a uh, strap on it, and that kind of sucks. Uh, I've never had to paddle this. Well, hopefully, I don't ever have to. 
We're moving back. Um, so we got the 16 by 16 inch Yak Attack Black Pack. This is the new new uh, version, and also have the new um, was a Gear Track box. I, I just bought one. I I might buy two. I, I don't know. We'll see. Um, but I got that strapped to the boat, and I've got uh, some bungees on there. That stays on there. But what I did recently is I added these uh, aluminum uh, angle bars. And those are all, they're screwed to the black pack uh, and then mounted to the tracks. Um, and th what that did was bring this black pack because it doesn't fit in the tank well here, it's too wide. Originally I had it sitting here. So that brought the chair up even further and took away some of that precious deck space that I, I really want. You know, I want to be able to walk back and forth or get down on one knee to net a fish or whatever. I want the most room I can. So I came up with that. There were some awesome guys on the uh, Unlimited, uh, New Canoe Unlimited page, the Facebook page, that had also done similar stuff with that. And so that I was able to get, hell, probably six to eight inches back, moving the black pack back. And uh, I, I'm really excited about it because it gave me more, um, it gave me more storage space under here uh, for the soft plastics and the swim baits and it gave me more deck space which in my mind is super important uh, so inside the gear track um, boxes I just got some uh, like my leader line 10 pound 8 pound and I got my scale uh, that was something that you know would go in the black pack and it would kind of bounce around and just kind of get in the way and you know, it's a $50 scale. I really didn't want it to bounce around or trying to, you know, say you're, you got a big fish and you're trying to dig around and find it. It was just a pain in the ass. So I come up with that. I think it's worth 25 bucks. And that's uh, screwed and siliconed right to the black pack. Um, so we'll get inside this black pack and you can kind of see how I got it stored. And if you notice, I've got a uh, gas strut. I'm probably going to have to add a second one now that I got that gear. Uh, the track gearbox there um, but it it does help push it up uh, we'll we'll add another second one I got it I already have it I just haven't installed it so you can see in here I got three 3700s uh, I got two 3600s um, I got a small container for like you know markers and super glue that kind of stuff um, Another smaller box there for some crankbaits, some random ones, and then I, I always keep a bag of uh, for swim baits. You know, those clamshells are nice because the baits don't get messed up, but they take up a lot of space. So as of right now, I just got them in this gallon Ziploc, kind of keep them all together and not, you know, all over the place. And, and the storage kind of like, uh, it cycles through like certain times of year, like I'll probably, in the summertime, I'll probably have another 3,700 in here and I'll take some of these out and, you know, just depending seasonally on what's, you know, what the fish are eating. Um, as you see, I got three of the black pack rod holders on each side and then I added these two, so a total of eight. So eight rods up here and then, uh, like I said, 12 rods seems to be the sweet spot with bringing a lot of rods but not having them in the way. Um, I can bring more, but I feel like then it starts to kind of get a pain in the ass. All right, back here we got the battery box, uh, and that's strapped down. Um, this does not stay on the boat uh, when I'm traveling. You know, it's a $700 battery, so uh, this is also mounted on those aluminum bars, um, so it can be as far back as possible to still get that room. Uh, so in, in here... Uh, this battery box too is it's a Plano, and uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's awesome. It fits a hundred amp hour battery really well. Uh, this front container, which I really like, um, so like if say my uh, my breaker pops or something, I don't have to dig around in the battery box. I can just you know pop this, you know hit the button reset if I need to, um, and you can see I have uh, your power, your positive wires coming in through here. Uh, also have um, some LED lights, so if I was like night fishing or setting up in the morning, you know, I don't know, looks cool. And then inside, 
I've got so my wiring for the lights, LED lights, and then I also got my wiring for the plug. Uh, so I'm running two plugs right now, and this is all six gauge, um, marine grade tin coated wire. Don't cheap out on wire. Get bigger size wire and get good stuff. And those wires run out. So here's my other Marine Co. 70 amp um, troll motor plug. That feeds my troll motor. And that wire goes right up, goes up there to the motor. This other plug is for my lights. Um, you can, with these lithiums, you can run other things off of the motor battery. But do yourself a favor, don't run the fish finder off of the motor battery. You'll just, you can have interference, you can... If it's not a lithium, you can have voltage drop and you can just have issues. It's just not worth it. So get a separate battery for the fish finder. Uh, behind there, I got my 360 light. Um, that's just, uh, I think I got it from Academy. It's actually pretty sweet. It's t telescoping. Uh, I think it's 48 inches. Got, I put an LED light on the top. It plugs right in. You just put it right in there and I ran the switch up to the switch panel. Uh, behind that is the juice. If you have a bow mount troll motor on your kayak or your drawn boat and you don't have a rear motor, you have to have a rudder. I don't care what anyone says. They just operate so much better with a rudder because if you have something up front like the bow mount and you have it, it's in the water and the wind blows and there's nothing back here the first thing that's going to turn is the ascent because there's something in the water up there that, you know, produces drag. And if there's nothing back here, you're constantly going to be doing like this. Um, I ran uh, a pursuit before this and I did the same thing and it helped hugely, made a huge difference in fishing in the wind, fighting the wind, uh, just tracking, you know, you're not touching the remote nearly as much. Um, and the same thing with this, I ran it one trip without the rudder. Uh, just to kind of see, because some guys, oh, you don't need a rudder. I was constantly playing with the remote to keep the boat just going straight. So I put that on here, just like my last boat. And it's just the uh, new canoe, moat, the plastic motor mount. I made it a little bit sturdier, added some more plastic to it. But it's all it's 70 bucks to make this thing brand new. It's a Minn Kota Endora um, transom bracket. Endura shaft, 30 inch shaft, and then that's the bull nose rudder. Uh, you can get that on Amazon, they're like 30 bucks. Uh, just the, that rudder part bolts right to the shaft. The shaft and the uh, transom mount I bought off of uh, trollingmotorparts.com and it's about 70 bucks to make, totally worth it. I mean, if you got the money, get the new canoe one, that one's cool, you can turn and whatnot. And you could set this one up to turn as well, but it's just a fixed position. I have a, um, paracord to it i've never had to pull it up but if you know i get stuck on a log or whatever i can just pull it up and that will come up um but for the most part that's that's my build uh it's been awesome i love it it's the best boat i've had so far for fishing um obviously this is a tournament rig and there's quite a bit of money wrapped up in it eventually i'd like to get uh, an HDS Live 12 or maybe a Garmin 12. I don't know. We'll see. And I'd like to get forward facing sonar and um, eventually, you know, I'll probably move that rod holder off and I'll use that track right there for a um, maybe a sniper pole or the dugout uh, tackle mount is a pretty good one that I like. Uh, and this is uh, my trailer. It's just a um, small boat trailer. I put plywood down, uh, put new wheels and tires on it, ran some new lighting. Um, over here you can see I get the spare mount, the spare tire mount and tire. And then over there is uh, my toolbox that I'll put paddle, net, and the bow mount in there while I'm traveling. And uh, then the gear pod, like I said, that will come right off, go in the back of the Jeep. And then I just take tackle out. Uh, I was leaving tackle in the in the black pack for a little while, but going down the highway and it bouncing, a lot of the hard baits were starting to get kind of scratched up from like rubbing on hooks and kind of bouncing around in there. So I don't 
do that anymore. But uh, but yeah, it, it's been really great. Uh, if you got any questions about the build or you know how I did it or what products or whatever, feel free to you know hit me up on Instagram or Facebook or you know drop a comment down below. Uh, like I said, I'm going to fish this coming weekend, um, so hopefully I'll get some good content for that and put out another video. But uh, until then, we'll see you later.